Hi, I'm Pete Williams from Infinity Telecommunications. And in this short video, I want to show you how phone systems work. So what you can see beside me on the screen here is a PABX box. That's the brains of a phone system. And every small office with a phone system needs a PABX box because that's like a computer server. Now off that PABX box, you obviously have handsets. In this example, let's say it's an office of four staff. So you can see here there's a four handsets for various people. Admin, reception, sales, accounts, all different departments have obviously handsets on their desks. Now keyboards, just like computers, don't actually have anything stored in them. That's exactly how phones work when it comes to a phone system. All the brains of the phone system, the voicemail messages, the programming, the uh, on-hot advertising, all that is actually stored in that PABX box there. The handsets are just like keyboards to computers. Now, also to make a phone system function, you need phone lines. So the phone lines come from a, uh, a carrier, your telco, whether it be Telstra, Optus, M2, People Telecom, whoever it might be. That would be your phone system or phone line, sorry, provider. Now you might have three phone lines coming into that phone system. And that's the basic setup. Now what happens when a call comes into the office? You actually get someone calling the office to actually uh, speak to a staff member. Well, what happens is they obviously call your main office phone number. The telco routes that call through the first phone line into your phone system. And then based on the programming you've chosen, you can have all four handsets ring, one phone, two phones, it doesn't matter. The call will come in and ring at the various handsets. And in this example, let's say the admin person has answered that first phone call. Nice and simple, and they're talking away to a customer, helping them with an order or any sort of uh, issue that they're ringing about. So what happens if a second customer, a supplier, or just a second person tries to call your main office number? Well, if you have what's called line hunt or rotary group set up with your carrier, what they'll do is they'll realize that the first line is actually already in use. And they'll route that call or hunt that call through to the second phone line you have with them. And that's how that second phone call gets into your phone system. They call your main number, it's just the telco is smart enough to realize that they should actually automatically transfer or rotate that call through to the second phone line. It again comes into your phone system and you can decide based on the programming that's set how that call is, is answered. In this example, it's come through to the second handset. So what happens if a third caller calls in on that main office number? Well again, the call will be routed through the telecommunications provider through to the third line and get into your phone system. But what happens if a staff member wants to make a call out in this example right now you see on the screen, there's only two calls uh, being used of our three lines. Well, this person here uh, gets a dial tone on their phone and makes an outbound call and it goes out on the third phone line you've got with your service provider. Now the issue now is that all of your three phone lines are actually in use in conversation. So a big question we often get asked is, what happens if a fourth person tries to call your business in this scenario, when all of your phone lines are currently in use with conversations? Well, if you've only got three lines and they're all busy, and a fourth person does call your business, they're going to get an engaged signal. Because there's no way for the carrier to actually get that fourth phone call into the phone system. So they won't get voicemail, they won't get placed on hold or anything like that. Because as I mentioned before, those features and functions are inside the PABX box. So you need a phone line available for that call to be able to get into the phone system and wait on hold or something like that. So when you call the big banks or the health funds or anything like that and you get stuck waiting on hold for half an hour, it is because they literally have hundreds of phone lines going into their very, very large PABX phone system. So while you're waiting on hold, a line is being taken up from their carrier, you're sitting inside the phone system on hold waiting for someone to actually answer that call. The call's actually being held inside the phone system, not before it. So be aware that if you've only got three phone lines and you want to have more than three people on call simultaneously, you'll have to get additional phone lines to give you that uh, extra capacity and redundancy. So what about transferring calls? That's another question we get quite a bit. Is once that call's come in to, let's say for example, the main receptionist here who's answered the call uh, on line one, and they want to transfer that call through to a salesperson who is uh, this person down the bottom here as this phone system uh, is programmed. Well, all they need to do is put the person on hold. That 
uh, transfers the call back and sits it inside the phone system here. The person is still on line one, the line is still in use at this point, but the system then just transfers the call back out to this salesperson here who can answer the call and have that conversation. That frees up the receptionist now to answer any other calls that come in or out of the office. Another question we often get asked when it comes to how phone systems work is what is direct in-dial and how do phone systems work when I have the ability of calling individual staff members directly on their personal phone line? Well, let's say for example again, we have a business that has four extensions, so four handsets coming off the phone system. And then when it comes to their actual phone lines, in this example, this business has two phone lines. So they've got their telco provider here, Optus, People Telecom, M2, whoever it might be, with two phone lines going into the phone system. Now to get direct in-dial, the best way to do it is with ISDN phone lines. It's a certain type of phone line you can get from all the carriers. And what it allows you to do is get what's referred to as a 100 number direct in-dial scenario. So that business now has 100 phone numbers that will run on top of those two phone lines. Now obviously you can scale this as much as you like, but this example is only with two phone lines. So that means they'll have 100 phone numbers to do what they will with it. And what happens is, when a call comes in on, let's say for example, line one, the phone system can uh, identify which one of those 100 phone numbers have been rung. And then based on the programming, you can decide that when someone calls uh, the last four digits of your phone number 0001, then the call transfers straight through to Tom in sales. If they call your phone number 0003, for example, that goes out to Scott in distribution. So it's the phone system that has the smarts to realize which phone number is being rung and then transfer that call directly to the relevant extension. Now, even though you've got 100 phone numbers, if you've limited your system to only having two phone lines, you're still restricted by only allowing two simultaneous calls happening in or out of the phone system. So if both lines are busy with phone calls and a third person calls one of those 100 numbers, they're going to get an engaged signal because you're only uh, allowed to have one call down one line. That's all the, the technology is available to have. So you need to have more phone lines if you want more simultaneous calls. But it's a direct in-dial feature from your telecommunications provider matched with the right programming inside your phone system that allows for staff to have their own direct phone number and avoid all the calls coming through your receptionist or admin team. So how do conference calling work when it comes to phone systems? Well again, in the example you can see here, this business has four handsets and three phone lines. So let's walk through an example of a conference call. So let's say for example the conference call is between these two parties and a supplier outside the building. So someone first needs to engage the actual external party into the call. So this person makes a phone call through the PABX, out one of the phone lines to that third party, and they're in a standard everyday phone call. Now if they want to get a third party from their internal office into the actual conference call, it's very, very simple. All that happens is, is the person who initiated that conference call can invite by hitting a couple of buttons on their phone another staff member into that conference call. So there's not a second external phone line being used in this scenario because there's only one external party. So what happens is the two internal parties and the third party are all connected into a conference bridge inside the PABX. Because remember, just the handsets are like keyboards to a computer. All the function and power is inside that PABX box. So in this scenario, it still leaves two free phone lines for other staff members and other clients and customers to actually call into the business and communicate. So there's a number of things you need to know when it comes to voicemail with phone systems. Firstly, it's almost a must-have feature when you've got the direct in-dial functions that we spoke about earlier. Because if someone is calling a staff member directly and bypassing the reception or admin team, and that person is actually unavailable, having voicemail is like having your own private message bank, just like your mobile phone. So with direct in-dial, it's almost a must-have, as I mentioned, so people can leave direct messages for that particular staff member. It's also important just in general day's day-to-day uh, -day business. It saves you having to hand around post-it notes with scribble and emails to get lost. 
staff, clients, suppliers, and stakeholders can leave direct personal messages to the actual staff member they're trying to reach. But how does voicemail work when it comes to phone systems? Well, as I've already mentioned, handsets when it comes to a phone system are just like keyboards to a computer. So the voicemail is actually stored inside the phone system as its own little hard drive and feature set. So the voicemail actually is all stored here. So when a call comes in for the office, even after hours, a call comes in on, on line one and needs to either go directly to the voicemail box after hours because you're closed, or whether the call's trying to get to Judy but she's on a phone call and needs to go to her voicemail box, the call actually goes straight into the voicemail function of the phone system. Now something to keep in mind is, if a staff member over here is also trying to retrieve their voicemail, they too are accessing that voicemail function of the phone system at the same time. Now with voicemail, what you have to make sure that it has is enough ports or enough licenses to have mutual people actually accessing that functionality at the same time. So if you have two people from the outside world leaving voice messages, one for the business and one for Scott, and you've got Julie checking her voicemail at the same time, that's three people trying to access the voicemail function simultaneously. So in that scenario, you have to make sure that your voicemail has three ports or more. Otherwise, that person won't be able to get access to that particular functionality during that simultaneous uh, access that everyone's having. So that's a big, important point to keep in mind. Other features when it comes to voicemail is day greetings. It's also a very common function that's part of the voicemail card. And what that is, is when someone calls your office, and you hear sort of the, you know, for sales press one, for accounts press two, that sort of auto attendant tree, that's one form of day greeting. Another form of day greeting is just a professional backup receptionist. So if all the calls have been programmed to come in and just route directly to the receptionist or a small admin team, having a day greeting is that backup. You'll answer the calls professionally. Hi, thanks for calling ABC. Your call's important to us, please hold. That person will then placed on hold hearing your on-hold advertising, which is a separate function again of the phone system. It's your on-hold advertising there. And while they're waiting, they're hearing that message. And then once the reception team is available, the call will then ring through to that person's handset and they can answer the phone. You also have the choice of actually programming the system, have a flashing light so the receptionist can see when line two or three is being uh, rung in on and they can easily juggle those calls by putting people on hold and answering multiple calls. But the voicemail functionality is a must-have for most phone systems these days.